our channel. I'm Blonde, aka Alex. And I'm Blonder, aka Desiree. And we have a special guest. <laughs> <laughs> it's me. <laughs> no. Well, we're here. This is Chantel again. Um, sorry, I was too excited. We are doing a Halloween themed mukbang. Mukbang. Yeah, mukbang. Mukbang. We have yeah. witches. <laughs> Witch hat calzones, which are mm -hmm. like little pizzas, but like witches hats. We have chips and some queso that is Halloween and spicy. Well, we go with the witch hats, but yeah, that's the pizza sauce. Yeah, and we've got some Halloween cookies, and we are going to <gasps> <laughs> dibs. <laughs> at all so we're gonna um yeah go ahead <laughs> oh my god are they not delicious no it's so good Ugh. oh wait i thought you were gonna be like is it gross no it's great no i know they're great <laughs> did you make them not him not like him. <laughs> god, <at> walmart <laughs> all right but they are good i've already had them. i was about to be like bitch open a bakery <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, we are doing a Halloween themed mukbang and we're going to talk about scary stories. But first, after she finishes this cookie, it is so cute. <laughs> shout, 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 So to start off this mukbang, we are going to do some tequila some shots. Some Patron Centronage. Yep, so here we go. Exactly. So, ready ladies? Oh. Are you chasing your kid with cookie? No. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen that before in my life. I didn't know you were supposed to chase your kid. Y'all get started. I'm going to get my dog to bed. I thought you were just supposed to suffer it. <laughs> so, we are. We're also, while we're talking, eating this wonderful food that I'm really sorry if it's not good, y'all, but I hope it is. It is really good. The queso is great. Well,. Desiree had me scared that I wouldn't dip in my chips in the right thing. <laughs> By the way, what? What? The first no, one. I'm just saying. Did you scare me? Did I can't you? see. I'm in a vulnerable state. No, that's gonna be fine. I'm just saying most of the cheese and pepperonis and stuff, like you have to put them in the middle, so it may not like. You may get just some it's bread really on though. the end, but they are crescent rolls, and who doesn't love fucking crescent rolls? And the seasoning's good. Mm -hmm. mm. But. I also want to tell some scary experiences we've had. Okay. Who wants to go first? Have either of y'all had scary experiences? I don't do the fucking supernatural, so I don't try to go toward it. Oh, uh, don't come and you? find me either. Um, um, I guess I can just talk about my parents' house. Please do, yes. So... My parents' house was built in 1803. Y'all, <laughs> <laughs> once you do get to the cheese and stuff, if y'all already have it, it's fucking amazing. Uh -huh. This is so good. I'm gonna have to. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 Alex just no. lost half of her great crescent. <laughs> she lost the whole thing in the sauce. Crescent row one, Alex zero. Yes. Anyways, my parents' house was built in like 1803. But so it's already like really old. Um, oh, it's so good. It's got a lot of land, a lot of memories. My Monopoly Lord of the Rings ring is still there in the earth to oh, this day. Oh, I wasn't day. even talking about that house. Oh I'm shit! I was talking about the, my parents' house now. For a cut, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> childhood home i'll get to that one because that one's had some more but my my parents current home was built in 1803 this is where you at girl get over here i'm out here oh uh, yeah you're barely <laughs> even in the frame <laughs> but gus was okay gus is this guy bless his little heart 
his wife, it was her family home. Like it had been in her family since the time it was built. Oh shit. <laughs> Gus committed suicide in the detached garage in a recliner that is apparently buried on the property. And I don't think Gus is a vengeful spirit. He hasn't done anything vengeful. But I do sense his presence. I do think he is there. But I think he's just kind of happy that his alcoholic wife isn't there anymore. <laughs> but um, you do, like, you get creepy feelings in certain rooms. You get, uh, you hear weird noises. Like, it really is creepy in general. No one has had any, like, super bizarre, like, crazy, like, let's get the fuck out of here moment yet. Yeah can confirm the house is extremely creepy. You get vibes. Yes. It is probably haunted by exactly who we're not real sure, but somebody. <laughs> but somebody out there. Well, who's that? I'm gonna need to be making these all the time now. Mm -hmm. They're so <laughs> good. I really love them. So, I guess that's the general gist of it. That's crazy. Like I said, I don't go towards supernatural places for a reason. I mean, like, I think part of the reason that we don't have anything, like, bad happen there is because no one goes in there and tries to, like, I'm one of those people that I just feel like as long as you don't try to fuck with them, they're not going to bother you for the most part. So I don't go try to fuck with them, and they haven't bothered me. <laughs> so, also... My father's house, which I have since gotten married and have moved in with my husband. And we live in another house. And it was very, very important to me whenever we were going to look at this house before we moved in. It was very important for me to be able to get inside before we moved in. Um, so I could make the decision whether or not we we're going to live there. Because I had to go inside and be able to sense, like, is this okay or am I not going to be able to sleep here? Um, and it's okay. Like... That feels 110% safe. I have never, ever experienced anything in the house, so that's good. But it also feels kind of, like, lonely and boring sometimes because I have spent my entire life <laughs> dealing with haunted shit. I don't ask to see the supernatural either, <laughs> but it comes at me. It's not fun, okay? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? It looks fine. Okay, great. <laughs> that ruined my look. Anyway, um, I don't know where to start. So, I will just start with the first encounter that I remember in my life. Um, so, my parents, whenever I was really, really little, bought a double wide. I don't think it was even a double wide back then. It was a single no, wide. Yeah, before the first, they, yeah, the first yeah, one was a single wide. It was a single wide. It was before they came out with a double wide. And, um... So on our age a little. I was, yeah. <laughs> I was probably, I don't know how old it was. I was really little, though, because... Yeah, they, I barely remember it. Yeah, so I was really little. Um, I would say, like, seven or under, probably, for sure. Anyway, my older sister and I were playing hide-and-seek in the house. And, of course me being naive and like stupid like i didn't think of any good places to hide so of course i went to the damn closet and um our closet was one of the ones where um it was like the sliding doors or whatever and i was scared of the dark like most young kids are so i hid in the closet but i kept like you know i kept the doors kind of like cracked just a little bit so some light can come through and i knew that my sister if she came around the corner she would see me immediately because like i was standing in the light but I didn't care because I didn't want to stay in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> but another section of the closet was kind of like illuminated with light because I had the door cracked. And for whatever reason, I'm sitting there and I remember this very vividly. I'm sitting there and I'm holding the door and I'm like looking out of this crack that's like this big, like waiting for my sister to come around the corner. And all of a sudden I just happened to like look to my side and there was oh. another face of a child right here staring at me. And I remember this story. Oh. Yeah. I took the hell off, okay? I slid that door open. I took off running down the hallway, passed my sister. I was crying, ran to my parents, told them what happened. I 
do remember, I slept, I mean, I slept with my parents anyway, between them sometimes, but I remember them telling me that like I didn't go, I didn't even walk back into my room for weeks. I didn't even do it. Um, but that was my first encounter with somebody. Was that when your first one? That was my very first one. That's the first memory that I have of my very first encounter. So there's my first encounter. And it just took off after that and I never asked for it. Yeah, because you have to tell the, the, the story about the cemetery. Oh God, okay. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll, we'll let Desiree go next and then we'll circle back around. I thought you're not fucking around Supernatural. But you don't have any kind of crazy Listen, stories either. I can make my own damn show off the shit I've been through. You really haven't had any kind of like creepy anything. It doesn't have to be like. I mean. That's right, you live in the fucking middle of nowhere. There's no way you haven't had some kind of... Like, the name of your road alone screams creepy. What's the I name mean, of your road? Bogus Hollow. Oh, yeah. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no. Now, the other day, it was like two weeks ago, we did go in the hospital, and the girls at the hospital said that they saw some kind of shadowy figure. Yeah, bitch, you did work at a hospital. Yeah, no, <laughs> I didn't see that shadowy figure. The girls did. So, they tell us, like, I work night shifts. I work 7 p.m. to uh, 7 a.m. In the ICU, it's like six beds. I would have done been scared the shit out of there. Somebody done Well, I lock down them. both doors and close all the doors to the room Those and everything don't else. give a shit about the doors. <laughs> well, I didn't make myself feel safer. Well, but maybe, maybe. They were like, yeah, we saw a shadow figure. I'm like, and you? Skirt, skirt, excuse me. <laughs> They're like, we saw a shadowy figure. And then two of the girls said they saw the shadowy figure while they were, um, changing one person they saw they heard the door close and it looked like footprints but they looked out they said hello and out there nobody was out there nobody went into any of the rooms nothing oh. and then another girl one of the nurses uh, she said i saw a figure behind me today i said excuse me bitch she said i don't know i was walking toward past one of the rooms and like all of our rooms have glass doors that way we can see the patients but they also have curtains for privacy too so she's walking past one of the curtains and she saw the shadowy figure on top of the curtain, like beside I'm glad the I curtains. I have a grudge against your hospital right now. <laughs> I mean, I think room, uh, one of our rooms is haunted. I'm almost positive. Uh, there's there's just no telling me that it's not. It is. <laughs> Guys, I can't see. <laughs> well, I'm laughing about what you're, you're like gently breaking it apart. That's how I eat. <laughs> well. I'm just glad that, like, I didn't have any crazy-ass experiences like that while I was there. You I mean, didn't have any bad experiences while you were there with your mom when she had her appendix out, were you? Yeah. Not from the unit. the <laughs> <laughs> haunted bitches. Well. I guess this is the weird thing about, like, the house that I grew up in. It has a lot of memories, a lot of legendary experiences, to say the least. I don't even know how to... What do you want to talk about? Well, I will say, and yes, she had... So, she had the Lord of the Rings version of Monopoly. And, you know, little game pieces, um, one of which was literally a Lord of the Rings rake. It meant everything to me. And we were running around my front yard. Alex was chasing me with a fucking stick, a big one. Okay, it was, um, you know, whenever you have a tent, those poles you use to put the tent up with, that's what I had in my head. It was a pole? Yeah. I remember <laughs> That's what it was. I okay. Because we had had put tent up, tents up, and we were like playing with the tents and stuff. And I guess we were taking them down, and I had one of the big long poles in my hand, and you were running. But also, we were children, and she had this huge ass rake on her finger. It wouldn't even fit on my thumb, but I wore it anyway. Yes. And she, I am chasing her with this pole, and. <laughs> flies off and we literally searched my front yard like with micro like with little like magnifying glasses like metal detectors everything and then my sister my older sister was trying to help us <laughs> and she was driving a fucking four-wheeler in the yard and i'm like man you're just crushing it further in the ground she just kept going i'm like mm. That's what happened. It just got crushed further in the ground. We never found the ring, but till the, the good, you know, 
the good thing is whenever I got married, <laughs> I got married to a man who don't give a shit and accepts me for who I am. And I got the one ring that I have always ever wanted in my life. It's true. It's from Jens Hansen. They are the people who made the ring for the movie. Look at it, bitch. It's what it is. So she has a real ring from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> it's everything I ever wanted. Know that. You didn't know that about my wedding ring? Mm -mm. A lot of people don't. Sometimes I have people like, oh, you're married? And I see them look at my finger, expecting to see a diamond, and they see this. A lot of them don't comment, but I see their face, and I'm kind of like, listen, this is all I could have ever wanted in life since I was like seven years old. This is everything I've ever wanted. That's all that matters, though. It is. Yeah. So, that is the house that I grew up in. <laughs> That's the, the premise of all this. That's basically the sum of all this, yeah, like, of our childhood, kind of. Yeah, yeah. That, like, those are the types of experiences. The adults just kind of left us to our own defenses. And we, and we did shit, like, ran around and chased each other in the yard with poles and sticks. We ran and around barefooted in the woods. We didn't died. come back until after, di maybe uh, after that, nightfall. Maybe that's the scariest story. Is our parents <laughs> let us run around barefoot. We could have died, got gangrene, lost limbs. <laughs> I mean, for real. I mean, apparently every one of us are basically immune to, like, poison oak and ivy, I guess. Oh, because, yeah. Because, like... I never had it growing up, and we were in the woods all the time. We're probably, yeah. And the crazy thing about the house, though, is my grandparents built it. So it's not, like, it was built in, like, the 60s. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. So, it, like, it's not old. Nobody's died there. But, <laughs> oh, you're good. but uh, it has not been free of experiences. Like Lance, my younger brother, I have two brothers are twins. Lance has seen little black men, like shadowy men things running against the walls in the house. I've seen cabinet doors shut that no one was in the room. We've heard crazy shit happen. And that, like, that's the crazy thing. We don't understand why. Most of the time when someone something's haunted, it's because someone died there. No one died there. <laughs> it could have been the land, I guess. No, <laughs> that, that's valid. The land could do it. <laughs> but there were, um, that, that one probably, even though it was like literally a fraction, a fraction of how old the other, the house they live in now, my parents do. Um, this house was, um, I've definitely had more experiences there than I'd have the house my parents live in now. I never had an experience at your house besides, I remember you had all those damn porcelain dolls and I hated sleeping in your room every night. And then you would like cuddle Big Bear and I would try to like take Big Bear away from you so that I could feel safe. <laughs> no, so I Big Bear. Do you? Mm -hmm. No. Um, while they continue the stories, I'm gonna go get Big Bear because I feel the need to. Big Bear, I'm so excited. I used to love Big Bear. I mean, I still love Big Bear, but. I just wanna point out, I don't even know who the fuck Big Bear is. Big Bear is a giant stuffed bear that Alex has had since, I mean, like the earliest of my memories, Big Bear has always been there. Every time I went to Alex's house for the summer, Big Bear slept in the middle between us and we both cuddled Big Bear to go to sleep. And I'm so excited to see him again. Oh my god. Big Bear! Look at him! I can see enough to know Big Bear! He's so cute! Guys, this is Big Bear! I never had a stuffed animal this big whenever I was little. I guess my parents like just didn't care. <laughs> this is Big Bear. Like this is like he's huge. I got him for Christmas when I was two. Big Bear. Oh, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> oh, I will never get rid of this thing. I don't care if I have just paid ten thousand dollars to have him restored. Like he, I'm keeping him forever. I think the only oldest stuffed animal that I have. Do you remember Shoney's? Yes. I have a Shoney's teddy bear with yes. his little like railroad conductor outfit. <laughs> I have a Shoney's teddy bear. I've got like this pink flying horse. It's got like we could never walk. Somebody threw up on him. It wasn't me. But some, some kid threw up on him whenever they just put it out in my house for the summer and they couldn't get it all out. So he's got like discoloring on him. 
But um, it's a flying horse. He's pink. Do you oh, yes, him? yes, yes, yes. I still yes. have him. I have several like bags and totes of stuff, stuffed animals at my dad's house in his shop that I refuse to get rid of because even though I'm almost 28 years old, I'm one of those weird people that think that my stuffed animals have like souls and I will not get rid of them. Will not. <laughs> well, that's how I feel about Big Bear. I literally, if it is possible, I plan on... I don't care what I have to do, my great grandchildren. I am going to be dead and well into the earth before anything happens to this bear. Yeah. Because I got it when I was two, and I literally, since that point in time, up until I met my now fiance in 2015, he slept in the bed right beside me every single night. And she can vouch for that. Has he not constantly yes. always been on my We used to fight over Big Bear whenever <laughs> I would go spend the night with her. I'd kind of be like, well, I'm the guest, so I need to sleep with Big Bear. Anyway, he would end up sleeping in the middle, and then we would both have, have our arms and legs yes. thrown over him. And I swear to you, I was 21 when I met my fiance, and I still slept every night with Big Bear. Like, that's how important he was to me. He was given to me by my parents. My mother is now deceased, so, like, that's one thing that I have that to, I will always have that she had a part in giving me. And I don't care what I have to do. Um, if my house catches on fire, y'all will see me and my dog and Big Bear jump out the window. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm grabbing the dog and I'm grabbing Big Bear and I'll yell at John. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But, but that's how important he is to me. So, that, uh, yeah, Big Bear. I know that has something to do with Big Bear something special. But... And no, it doesn't have anything to do with like spookiness or anything. But like, I'm so emotional right now for <laughs> Big Bear. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, he means so much. I guess to darken the mood, we'll get back to <laughs> spooky shit. <laughs> Go back to my traumatic memories. Now, I don't know what you're going to tell next, but I will talk about... I was not with you when you that you were with Mary Beth when you went to the cemetery and had the terrible experience. But afterwards, we would try to go back to the cemetery, even though we were stupid as shit. Would we? Try. I don't even remember that. I don't remember it. You were like, tell me all about it. And we go, and like, because of the horror that I heard from you and Mary Beth both, we would like. Get near the cemetery and both freak the fuck out and take yeah, like, because, we like, would like dust in the way like yeah because like <laughs> I don't remember after that I don't remember ever stepping foot in that cemetery ever again did we ever like get to it actually we got to the cemetery we? but we would get close enough to like like the ditch and then we okay like, yeah because I don't this. remember ever being like physically no, in no, 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 it no, no, ever no, again no, no, after no. that but we okay. get like to the ditch and, we, and then we'd be like fuck this and yeah. Uh, Dip. So, here's probably the most outlandish story that I have. The one that's probably the hardest for people to believe whenever I tell it. And I don't tell it very often because I know that people probably already think I'm nuts. And I ain't trying to add to that. My dad thinks I'm nuts. I think he believes me now. But whenever I first called him, he was kind of like, mm, you're crazy. After the shit he's been through telling me I'm crazy. Anyway, but, um, so, I used to live in this place. This small little town, it was basically a road with like houses on each side. It's like a retirement center, a place where people went to die. Anyway, um, and me and my friend Mary Beth were one of the only children, I guess, living there. And I was like in uh, high school. I was in high school whenever I lived there. But there was a cemetery down the road. Nothing to do in this town. So after I would get out of school, I would meet my friend Mary Beth and we would walk around the neighborhood just talk and laugh and stuff like that. But we just walk around that neighborhood because there's nothing else to do. There's a cemetery and it had a little trail in it and stuff like that, really old cemetery. We would walk through it. One day we were walking through it and it was about dusk. Like it wasn't super dark yet, but it was getting dark. And we were standing near the entrance of the cemetery because there's this little girl that was buried there and she had like seashells embedded into her um, tombstone. So we were looking at that and there were only three there trees. Yeah. There were only three trees in the cemetery. They were at the far end of the cemetery. Um, they were clustered together. We're looking at this tombstone and we hear like a whole bunch of rustling in the trees. And I remember saying something about it. I'm like, that's a lot of birds to Mary Beth. We're looking in that direction already because we just heard a lot of shit. In between the trees, I kid you not. In between the trees, you guys remember 
the werewolf from Harry Potter, the mangy, scrawny looking little thing that was a werewolf from Harry Potter. That, I kid you not, is exactly what this thing looked like and it ran from behind one tree into the other. Now, I have always had an overactive imagination. So anytime I've ever seen anything, I always tend to kind of question it. Like, maybe that's not really what happened. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was doing. I was kind of like, maybe I didn't really <laughs> see that. So <laughs> I went to turn to Mary Beth. She was standing over here. I went to turn to Mary Beth, highly religious, by the way, Church of Christ. Um, so I went to turn to Mary Beth to ask her, like, if she saw that. And as I was in the pivot, I was just turning my torso, not even my legs, because I wasn't concerned, because I thought that my mind was playing <laughs> jokes on me. I wasn't concerned. I went to turn my torso to Mary Beth to be like, did you see that shit? I look over, literally, I've only ever seen this in a cartoon. There was a cloud of fucking <laughs> dust. A cloud of dust. She was gone. I look back, she's halfway to my damn house, down the road. And I'm like, <laughs> She wasn't even like, Chantel, we gotta go. She was gone. And so then I was like, shit, I ain't about to get eaten here. So then I took off. I didn't look behind me to see if it was following me. Nothing. I took off. I was mad because Mary Beth left me. <laughs> but I didn't I was also shocked because I didn't know she was that fast. Literally, I was in the pivot. I just saw this shit. I was in the pivot of turning my torso to ask her if she saw it. And she was halfway to my house. I've never seen anybody run that fast in my life. Anyway, and Mary Beth definitely does not run that fast unless it's an emergency. <laughs> I've never seen her run. I don't have any memory of her running except for that. There was dust, okay? There was dust, like the damn cartoons. Anyway, so I get to my backyard. She's crying, okay? This little poor little church of Christ, okay? Her whole religion has been shattered. She's crying. She's like in a puddle by my back door. And she was like, what did we just see? And I'm like, oh. I'm not even upset because I'm still trying to confirm if this was real. And I'm like, oh, so you saw it. And she goes, she's crying. She's like, yeah, I saw it. And I'm like, all right, I'm not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> she's like freaking out. You're just relieved that she is. The like, only one. <laughs> her life has been crumbled. Like everything that she's ever believed in has just been like broken away. And I'm just like, I'm just happy that I ain't the only one that saw it. <laughs> That's probably, that's the first, I guess, like maybe um, unhumanoid ghostly thing that I've ever seen in my life. But um, it definitely stuck with me. We never yeah, went back to the cemetery. Yeah, I, and I, like, I will vouch for that and say, because like she had that experience. And of course she comes like, we've always been super close. So she comes back to me, tells me about it. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Because <laughs> I've already like, she, you know, I've experienced crazy not like anything super crazy at her dad's house but like i know shit happens i ain't stupid <laughs> so i'm like oh fuck <laughs> so then little like mischievous kids we are we're like let's go see you know like and we never even like we would get to like the ditch that ran beside the, <laughs> and like we would just get no nah, we, we we would like Get to that point and be like, no, nope, no, nope, this is this is good enough. I'm not willing to see any more. See y'all. <laughs> yeah, like my my back door immediately, like directly faced the yeah. cemetery. We were super close to the cemetery, yeah. and I especially at night time. At night time, I could not even walk by the back door. I had to have the curtains on the back door windows like drawn. I couldn't even look at the cemetery after that. Oh yeah, it freaked me out so bad. I remember it went, like. We wouldn't even go, like, just, like, even in just your backyard at night, we wouldn't even, like. Yeah. Mm -mm. I mean, like, if, if I was, a, if Mary Beth didn't see anything, then I would have just been, like, I'm crazy. <laughs> and I would have never thought anything of it. We still would have taken walks through there and everything. And I would have never thought anything of it because I would have just thought that I made it up. But her confirming that she saw the same thing, I was, like, mm -mm. And then, like. <laughs> Too, I had we had been to the cemetery before that. Like I had gone to the cemetery with her before that, but then it's like every time after that, like yes, we knew that she had that experience, but at the same time, it was like okay, well, we like don't trust the creepy ass feeling we get around here. Peace out, see y'all. Yeah, bye. <laughs> Did you ever get a creepy feeling in the house, like oh. in our house? Oh yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's another.
another thing. Your house creeped me the fuck out. <laughs> I remember. Okay, so. <laughs> we, we had a Why are we okay, Desiree? How are you even friends with us? I don't even know. Because we had some, like, crazy-ass fucked up jobs. I keep so much stuff under the surface. <laughs> like, I didn't even <laughs> tell people. But, um. Because, like, people are going to think I'm crazy. But it's like, I'm. Sometimes I could be, I guess, because like I said, I do have an overactive imagination. So anytime I experience anything, I am kind of like, am I being haunted or did I imagine it? <laughs> but, so it's always like a war with myself. We, but We um, literally have someone who is just kind of like, eh, and then I'm like, mm. do you think I'm crazy? And you're like, oh. I'm not full no, blown no, in no, it, but no, I never no, asked no. for the shit. But like, we have all three levels of someone who is just kind of like, Eh, like stays away from it, dang it, like, eh, mm -mm. and then me, where I'm had just enough experiences that I'm like, fuck yeah, there's crazy shit out there, but I stay away too. <laughs> and then you just had every kind of full blown experience, and I don't even go chasing it; it just happens. I wish it wouldn't because, like, I'm one of those people. I'm a scaredy cat, okay, like to the core. Yeah, we, we don't I'm do a scaredy like, cat. Those haunted houses, scary. Plot. I don't. I can't, okay, because I live that shit in real life, and I ain't trying to go out and seek it. Remember when we used to do that stuff, and we always would be like in tears. <laughs> But the house that I used to live in, not like my old house, I had, there's plenty of stuff there too, but like the house that I used to live in, the house by the cemetery where I saw the thing, um, it was haunted too. And I moved in there whenever my mom and dad separated, me, my mom and my sister moved into this house that was like two houses down from my grand. And we fixed it up. Like we had to remodel it and stuff like that, but we fixed it up. It was a poor job. Anyway, we didn't know what we were doing. But... I always it was livable. Yeah, it was. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> but I always felt something in the house. But I was just kind of like, we gotta have somewhere to sleep. <laughs> um, I mean, that kind of just Yeah, but it had like, an well, upstairs. I'm here. I want to see my family, so I guess I'm yeah, to deal with it. <laughs> but it had an upstairs, and the upstairs used to be nothing but an attic because the rooms were all like the triangle, pointy rooms or whatever. You couldn't really set anything near the wall. Um, so it used to be an attic, but that's yeah, and where... Yeah, I'm tall, so, like, I constantly walk the room. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you never really were in my room that much, to be honest, because I wasn't either. Well, no, also because, especially during the summer, it was 115 degrees. Which, I love the heat, okay? So, like, sometimes, whenever I'd get home from school, I would go upstairs. If somebody else was in the house, never alone. But if somebody else was in the house, I'd go upstairs and I would, like, take a nap in my bedroom where it was, like, 150 degrees because heat rises. Anyway, I love the heat. But that house was haunted by a ghost girl named Tiffany. Yes. No one believed me. I saw this girl. I was in the house by myself because I was trying to, this is while we were remodeling it. And I was trying to take the chance to pick out which bedroom was going to be mine before my sister could get to it. <laughs> because I was like, if I pick the best bedroom before she's even here, then automatically I get dips. Yes, right. Yeah. Anyway. So, I was going to pick the bedroom where the window pointed towards my friend Mary Beth's house. Because I was like, oh, yeah, because then I can see Mary Beth's outside. And then I can just, like, open my window and yell <laughs> at her and be like, bitch, get down here. <laughs> anyway, um, I did not get that room because that is the room that Tiffany was in most of the time. So, I was like, nope, I'm going to that one. Um, anyway. Which wasn't much better, but. <laughs> no. The whole upstairs was, like, to me. The whole, I lived in that house for a couple of years, at least three, right? I lived in that yeah, house for at, at least, least like three years. At minimum. And I never spent hardly any time in my room unless everybody in the household was home. Fire up. You want to get me a bear? Um, I think I'm going to do fireball this time. We're going to do fireball shots. Yeah. Are you? Are you not? I don't know if I'll be prepared for fireball. After. Yeah, we're good. After what? Pizza. Mm -hmm. oh. Um, okay, so need to... No, she's yeah. She's I still have my margarita, so I'll be oh. okay. <laughs> but um, no one believed me. Okay, like my mom said that she believed me, but whatever. Um, my sister didn't believe me at all. Um, my grand down the road, nobody believed me that I was kind of like there's a teenage girl, blonde headed, in a floral print dress that is here. Her name is Tiffany. Like I know this shit. She appeared to me. She talked to me. Nobody believed me. 
until we had been living in this house for at least a year. I'm pretty damn yeah, sure. It, at least yeah. a year. I never went upstairs unless everybody in the house is home because, like, it just, the vibe was bad, okay? I just didn't do it. No, it, um, it really, like, it, it wasn't. We would very rarely be up. It, it was not, a good, no. It no. just, there, there was nothing good about being upstairs. But one time. Except the computer. <laughs> except the, the computer. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, one time. I remember I was at my grand's house. We were, I don't know, it was probably a holiday or some kind of shit because all the family was there. And my yeah, grand, or, yeah, yeah my grand had told everybody, laughing, kind of mocking me. She had told everybody there that like, I, there was a ghost in my house. I had seen a ghost. So everybody's kind of laughing at me like, tell us about this Tiffany. And I'm like, bitches, it ain't funny, okay? <laughs> like, she's there and like, God, I ain't I dealing with y'all. I do remember that. That was terrible. Sir. Yeah, I was like, I ain't dealing with y'all. Anyway, like, everybody thought I was nuts. So, it was a couple months after that, I believe, that we had been living here for a while, okay? We had already remodeled the house. We'd been living here for a while. Sorry. I slept either on the couch and in the bed of my mother because I refused to sleep in my bed upstairs. Like I said, oh, I didn't yeah, there do was it. A I don't long, play. There was a long period of time where even when I would come, we would sleep in the bedroom downstairs. Yeah, like, we just, we didn't go upstairs, bitches, because it was haunted. That's where Tiffany was at, and I ain't trying to be up there with Tiffany. I honestly, like, I very rarely, like, I remember us playing, like, on the computer and the video games and stuff, like Guitar Hero and Final Fantasy and stuff. Yeah. But, like, as far as, like, us sleeping anywhere, like, I don't think we almost always slept downstairs. Yeah, if, like, if it was daytime or if somebody was with me, that was the only time that I was upstairs. At nighttime, and if I was alone in the house, I was not upstairs. You would not catch me upstairs. Not dead. You wouldn't do it. Anyway, but we'd been living there for a while. I was in the living room because my bedroom was basically a living room because I didn't sleep in my bed. I slept on the couch. That's <laughs> true. I suffered a penis <laughs> on the couch. <laughs> anyway. Almost died. Every story. <laughs> but, um... I found like there was something sticking in between the carpet and the baseboard in the living room and it was like in the open and like the place there's no furniture blocking or anything and I'm like that's kind of weird. We'd been living there for a while. Never saw this before. I went over there and I picked it up and it is this old it's like one of those I guess like two by three I guess wallet pictures of a little boy and a like infant girl and I'm like who the hell is this? I turn around, because I'm thinking it's like our family. I turn it around, and it says, Mark and Tiffany, bitches. And I was like, what is this doing in my living room carpet? I went and I showed my mom. I showed my grand. I showed everybody, because I was like, fucking proof. We don't have anybody in our family named Tiffany. We but on not. the back of this <clears throat> picture, it said Mark and Tiffany. We don't even have a little Mark. boy with the damp brown hair, fucking bowl cut. And then, like, this little baby girl with blonde hair. It's Tiffany, bitch. I told you. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you found this, like, what? You said, like, way after y'all started Way after that, we had been living when there. When they bought the house originally, like we said, they renovated it. And when I say renovated it, there weren't, like, there were no floors and half that. Like, no carpet, just wood. We like, built the stairs. They were way too steep. Yeah. Like, there was <laughs> all... Yeah. Like, they didn't like granted was it done OSHA <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but like when I, we say renovated we mean fucking renovated like tore shit out putting new shit up like a lot and I then, remember I spent my time as a kid trying to be helpful in the house by like putting what is it putting that damn plaster over like the nails in the wall <laughs> that's what I did <laughs> They just kick us out. They just be like, go play. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, basically, yeah, we... How are we even fucking alive? I don't even know. I don't know. But, like, I... I was so... I was really freaked out, but also really happy in that moment. Because I was like... Like, I have physical evidence that this bitch exists. And that she's in this fucking house. Like, we've been living here for years. And this damn little, like... Two by three wallet picture was just sticking in between the carpet and the baseboard. And like I said, it wasn't being obscured by any furniture. And there were or anything. no baseboards or carpet when we were in a No, we put everything in. <laughs> so it's like there's no way that somebody could just place that there. Anyway, I remember I showed it to my mom, and then my mom started getting a little more concerned, kind of like, Oh, honey, I think I believe you. And I'm like, Anyway. <laughs> Um, 
So I put it, because once again, my bedroom was the living room, and so I slept on the couch. And I remember on the coffee table, I put the picture on the coffee table and then put a heavy candle on top of it because I was going to take it to school the next day and show Mary Beth, my friend, because of course I told Mary Beth about Tiffany, but of course she never saw her. And I wanted to be like, look, look what I found the other day. I'm not crazy. I kid you not. This is one of the biggest thing that bothers me to this day is I woke up the next morning, the picture was gone and I never saw it ever again. The candle was in the same place, but the picture was gone and I have never seen it again. And it just pisses me off because that was the only evidence that I ever had that Tiffany was real. And she was real, I swear. I gotta go pee. Well, hang on, cause that's right. <laughs> I gotta pee. Can I go well, pee. I gotta go pee so bad. I don't have to pee so bad. I'll try it later, I guess. Sound like I'm surprised.